My brothers and sisters in Christ, there's an old adage that says, telling the truth means never having to remember anything. It's the point that those who deal in deceit and lies have to remember the lies that they've told and therefore can box themselves in, while telling the truth requires nothing of one. If one is always forthcoming, then it's a much easier path. This quote or adage comes to mind for me in light of today's readings, which both, in a way, deal with the theme of freedom. In the Gospel passage, Jesus, in his continued dialogue in John chapter 8 with the Jews, says, uh, I've come to bring the truth, and the truth will make you free. The truth shall set you free. And so we hear an echo of this quote, the idea of truth leading to freedom. But the objection that's immediately made to him is, well, you're implying we're slaves. We're not slaves to anyone. In fact, Jesus' exact point is that those, those who are uh, in sin are slaves to sin. Whatever the vice may be, it traps a person, whether it's in deceit and lies, whatever it may be, link by link, our, our own slavery is made by our sins. Instead, the truth, the fullness of truth, does make one free. This runs counter to the temptation of the world that constantly offers us, which would tell us that the truth costs us something. The truth can often make us unpopular. The truth can make us be persecuted. The truth can mean owning up to something that might have consequences for ourselves. But this is based in a flawed definition of what true freedom is. Freedom, the lie of the world, is to tell us that freedom is for, to, to allow you to do whatever you want. Freedom is being free to do what I want. This is based in a flawed idea of the human person. It's an individualistic way of thinking when in fact we're created in God's image and likeness, we're created for communion. Freedom is actually the freedom to do what is right, to remove constraint for me to do what I ought to do. Anything else is actually drawing me deeper and deeper into bondage. And so, when we look at our country, our culture, or you know, or the, the word freedom has a very strong connotation for, for the American people. And it's based, we have our Bill of Rights, we have our Declaration of Independence, the idea of these things. But when we look even, and these come into our current political debates uh, of the freedom of speech, freedom of religion, you know, is it, do I have the freedom to do whatever I want without anyone being able to tell me what I can and cannot do? Or is the true freedom, for example, when we look at freedom of religion, the ability to not be restrained in expression, to not be coerced into violating one's conscience? This is consistent with freedom in the Christian ethos, the idea that I should always be free to do what I ought, what is right, not necessarily to pursue every desire. This is a countercultural way of thinking and is one that will put us at odds with the spirit of the age. And so, at first glance, telling the truth, being a person of the truth of the gospel, seems to cost us something. Again, it can make us unpopular, it can make us persecuted, it can put a target on our foreheads. But, in reality, the truth makes us free. When I live in the truth, I am free to do what I ought, and that brings peace. When I'm in harmony with God, regardless of what might be done to me, I will know peace. And when I don't live the truth, then I constantly have to keep up. I'm keeping up with the spirit of age. It's like constantly having to play a part in a game. And this may seem in, the, in a short-sighted way to be advantageous, to pursue my desires, but in fact, it's a slavery that's formed link by link in our chains. We see this in the first reading, the story of Daniel, the three young men are not willing to bow down to false worship, and they would rather be thrown into the white hot furnace than worship. 
uh, falsely. And they're thrown in, and of course, they are saved by God's hand and to the astonishment of Nebuchadnezzar. Now, we know in our present day there are some who go joyfully even to martyrdom. Not every story ends this way with the miraculous intervention of saving from bodily harm. Sometimes harm does come, sometimes blood is shed, and yet just as the martyrs in the name of God go to their graves joyfully, so the person who lives in the truth will know true freedom. The truth does make us free. We will know true peace and harmony with God when we are who we are supposed to be and when we live the most authentic version of ourselves in the truth in God. This may cost us some petty things, but we will gain everything. As we prepare to enter Holy Week and see Jesus go to the cross in the fullness of truth, may we open our eyes and our hearts to that which is true, that which is holy, that which is good. May God bless you all.